the cashier lady began to calculate. She was so fast that Bjorn was left shocked. After the count was done, it turned out that Bjorn had 182,413 magic crystals. Hearing the numbers, Jorn was also in shock. After hearing that, they gathered around him and started cheering for him. They also noticed his equipment and bag and started saying that they were jealous of him and that he was a true warrior. All of them were truly happy for him. He was being lifted up and thrown in the air by a crowd of barbarians. And he enjoyed that moment. But people started to complain about it. So the squad decided to hang outside of the checkpoint while some of them stayed inside the building to get their magic crystals counted. As they sat on the steps, Jorn decided that he should follow all the other barbarians because there might be something left to do that he doesn't know about. And he doesn't want to take the risk of getting exposed. So he would wait for them to return and stick with them. In the distance, he saw a group of elves hanging out. In that group, he saw Erwin. She was talking to her friends about how she learned to control spirits, and they applauded her. Jorn felt envious because she hung out with that sort of crowd, but he was surrounded by the savages instead. He noticed that she looked at him and waved stealthily from afar, trying to hide her connection with him. He quietly told her to meet tonight, and she agreed. Then the elf lady asked Erwin if she knew him. She denied it immediately. Meanwhile, the same happened to Bjorn. Karag asked him if he knew the elf, but Bjorn said no. Of course, barbarians are free, spirited and loud, and this guy straight up shouted that there's no way a number one warrior like him would hang out with those cowardly earheads. This pissed off Erwin's friends, and the mood became tense all of a sudden, but she didn't escalate the situation. Bjorn was annoyed, but thankfully, the rest of the barbarians came out of the building. So Bjorn got up, telling the other barbarians that they should leave now that everyone's here. On the way, he noticed a child calling out to his father. The child ran up to his father and hugged him. They told each other that they missed one another. This was also a feature in the dungeon in Stone Game. Anyways, there were moments of joy once you came out of the labyrinth. People would meet their families and friends. However, there were also moments where people would die, and the repercussions of that could be felt. A woman cries to her husband's companion, begging him to tell her where he is. But the companion can say nothing because her husband had died. Another moment happens where a woman is crying as a little girl innocently asks her mother where her brother is. These moments of agony and sadness couldn't be felt throughout the Toot game graphics. But now, seeing it in real life, his feelings were in chaos. After some time, the barbarians raised their mugs to drink the night away, pouring liquor down their throats like true barbarians. Jorn thought these guys were going to do something important, and he was worried he might miss a necessary step of sorts. But they were just trying to get drunk. He was angry looking at them, wasting his time. So he slammed his hand on the table and told them that he had somewhere else to be. Karak was shocked upon hearing this. The whole crowd became angry when they heard this. It looked as if they would kill him because he is the protagonist of the night and he is leaving. But they let him go happily while still calling him the best warrior. As he walked through the streets of Raftonia, he could hear the laughter and joy in people's voices. This place was peaceful and he felt comfortable walking around. He thought that there were no monsters or humans that would harm him. As he looked around at stores, he felt the relaxation of being in a place that had rules and laws. In this place, even if he fell down on the ground, nothing would happen to him. Unlike the labyrinth, someone might even help him. Then he walked into a hotel to properly take a rest, then started thinking that this other world might be more barbaric than the 21st century Earth, but it was still peaceful. Then he got a room for himself so he could change and shower. All those near-death encounters in the labyrinth had made him realize that living in Raftonia might not be that bad. After he came out of the shower, feeling refreshed, and now all he wanted was a comfortable bed to sleep. But thoughts of his home were rushing through his mind. He still wanted to go home, even if there is no one to greet him at home. As nighttime approached, Jorn woke at nine at night, 
feeling fully refreshed and relaxed. He remembered that he came out of the labyrinth at noon, so he must have slept around four to five hours. It was now time to go meet Irwin at the Black Whale Tavern, but an old man told him that the Black Whale Tavern was sold off ten years ago. Jorn was shocked to hear this. Then the old man got more into detail. Apparently, the son of the original owner got into gambling addiction, ending up costing him the tavern, so the name and the owner both changed. Jorn kind of expected it, but the game's version of Raftonia must have been years behind this one. Then he asked the old man the new name for the tavern. The old man told him the new name. The tavern was now called Python Path, and Bjorn had arrived at the place ready to meet Erwin. After seeing it, he wondered that the Black Whale Tavern used to look much different from this place in the game. He was glad that at least he can read this world's language. So he had to go to the library to fill his missing knowledge of this world. Then he entered, and this place was filled with people going wild. He immediately started looking around for Erwin, but she found him before he could. She called him over by waving her hand and saying his name. However, he noticed the elf lady from earlier was also there. The short-haired woman stared at him angrily, saying that he is the barbarian from earlier. He introduced himself as Jandal's son, Bjorn, and asked her who she was. She said she's the older sister of Erwin. Then Bjorn said that her name couldn't be older sister, so she just told him to call her Teresa. Then he remembered that Erwin's last name was Teresa, so this lady was trying to keep her real name hidden. He asked her reason why she was there. Then she stood up and slammed her hand on the table. She had a question for him, and she asked him why he would ask such a young girl like Erwin to meet him at a tavern like this at night. 